This fourth short clip of five about our Octagon Eco Incubators will give you the information you need about setting and turning your eggs in an Octagon Eco 20 or an Octagon Eco 40. To start with, you need some fertile eggs from a reputable breeder that are not older than a couple of weeks old. Otherwise, they may not be viable. You also need to make sure that if you have stored them, they've been kept in a cool environment. Um, not too cool, not a fridge, for example. Um, before you put your eggs in the Octagon Eco, make sure the machine has run for a couple of hours. And in previous clips, we looked at temperature adjustment and at setting up the Octagon Eco for humidity. So there will already be water in one of the channels before setting the eggs. Now, the Octagon models, the Octagon models have been designed to be as flexible as possible, accommodating eggs from quail up to goose eggs using the wire loop dividers. So let me just show you that here. So we have a tray here um, that we would place into the base of the Octagon 20. The wire loop dividers simply slot in. If I've got big goose eggs, I could create the wider space here to take them. You can experiment with these to get the best capacity um, especially if you've got eggs of different sizes that you're doing at the same time. Um, generally position the eggs so that they rest on the bottom of the tray and that, so they're not pressured by the dividers. We recommend that when you position your eggs in there you, point, you, you put the pointy end facing down and the big end facing up. So taking an egg uh, like this. This isn't a real egg. This is one of our ex, um, experimental eggs from the, uh, the technical department. But when you place your eggs in, you place the pointy end down like so. If for any reason eggs kind of are going to roll a little bit as the incubator turns from one, if the eggs can move from one separator up against the other. It's not going to do any harm, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, um, so let's put some eggs into the incubator. I've got a set of eggs here. Now I'm going to put them pointy end down as recommended. And what I find is that at the end of the um, tray, I've got a space. What I can do is I can take a bit of loo roll, cut it up, squash it down, and that will provide me with just enough there to wedge the eggs so that they stay pointy and down. Okay, let's assume I've done that for all of them. Bring the incubator back, lid off. Okay, so make sure the incubator is sitting flat on its base. Okay, uh, put the eggs in. We've got two little, two little handles on the side. We can just lower the eggs in to the incubator, like so. And there we go. Lid back on. And the eggs are now set. For manual turn, I'd simply turn the eggs like so. Let's get the wire out of the way, of course. Twice a day, end of the day, turn them 90 degrees, back the other way, twice a day, three times a day if possible. So that's what you do if you've decided that you want to turn the eggs yourself and you bought the model without the automatic turning cradle. Yeah. Turning is critical to egg viability. So if you've decided that you cannot guarantee you will turn the eggs at least twice per day, you may therefore have chosen to spend a little bit more money uh, in order to have the cradle. Uh, it is available separately from Rinsey, and most retailers, if you ever decide to upgrade it, will sell you um, a, a cradle separately. So to set up the cradle, we talked in an earlier clip about what you have. We've got two ends, two rods, and four screws. So we've got an end, which is our cable end, which plugs in. 
and we've got what we call a blank end. All we do is we take our rods and we plug them into the in, onto the the little socket here that uh, on on the on the on, at the end of the cradle, just like this. There we go. And likewise with the other one. Yeah. There we go. So that's set up. To secure them, we put screws in. There's little holes in the back, and we can put a screw into each of those, and that will tighten up the, the link with the rod. We need a Phillips screwdriver to do that. So there we go. So let's assume we've tightened all those up. That's just to be safe. It will actually stand okay without these, but it's best to do them. Once we've put screws into each end, we can sit the incubator on the cradle. There is a lug at the motorized end uh, where the cradle slips down onto. And you'll notice if you look at the end of the incubator, there's a, a, a slot onto, into which the, the, cradle, the cradle fits. So all we do is we take our incubator and we drop it gently, very gently, onto the cradle. And there we have it. You can then plug the cradle in and we now have the cradle operating. So, one of the couple of things about the cradle, never try to manually turn the incubator when it's on its cradle, because you'll damage the turning mechanism and you'll invalidate your guarantee. The cradle, which we call an auto turn cradle, the cradle is fitted with a clutch. So if you do hear a clicking sound when it's trying to turn, it probably indicates you're overloading the machine or that something is restricting the turning. So that should be a kind of warning sound to you to, to, to investigate further. Um, the cradle will turn the eggs hourly through 90 degrees. Um, it'll turn it one way and then an hour later it'll turn it back the other way. Okay, You can obviously alter the turning interval and turning angle if you do it manually. But if you definitely want automatic turning and want to vary the turning interval or turning angle for some very specific species like parrots, then you may want to check out the clips on the Mini Advance incubator. The standard interval and angle of turning that we have on the Octum Eco range is suitable for 99% of our customers. In the final clip, I'll look at hatching.